Welcome to Fun and Games Side Quests. Every episode is a different host sharing a video game they love and why they love it. How's it going, everyone? My name is Stephen Beaumont, and I am one fourth of the Great Game Debate podcast. Today, I have the express pleasure to discuss my favorite game of all time, Banjo Kazooie. Banjo Kazooie follows the story of Banjo the Bear and his lifelong friend and backpack subletting, motormouth, and all around sassy queen Kazooie as they endeavor to save Banjo's sister Tootie from the clutches of Gruntilda the Witch, their incessantly rhyming nemesis. So, in 1998, Rareware dropped what I consider to be the magnum opus of the then booming 3D platformer Collectathon Market, drawing a lot of inspiration from its Nintendo counterpart Mario 64 but showcasing marked improvements, such as a growing roster of moves in each level, different forms of level gating, and making finding and accessing levels fun puzzles themselves. Individual level timers, perfect and forward-thinking ideas that would sow the seeds for so many future speedrunners. And most importantly, unlike Mario 64's One Star and Leave the World, you could clean up every single collectible in Banjo-Kazooie and leave absolute perfection in game design. Going more in depth on why Banjo-Kazooie has held up so well in my opinion is probably in part due to the amazing lengths the devs went to to make you feel in control of a character in a 3D space. Having been in the 3D era for a little over three years, control for a lot of players was still not as tight as people were used to in the 2D platformers of previous console generations. And what Rare did in Banjo-Kazooie was offer an amazing array of jumps, high jumps, glides, flying, air recoveries, slide recoveries, and damage negating moves to ensure that even if a player messed up in their movement, they had the ability to adjust and save themselves from what would previously have been certain doom. The other factor of why Banjo-Kazooie is so perfect in my opinion is that it doesn't suffer from bloat and it utilizes content density in micro space. That is to say, the game has a heap of fun things to do in small, achievable levels. There are only 900 music notes and 100 jiggies to collect in the entire game, scattered across nine snappy levels and an amazing interconnected labyrinthine hub world. There are also a few other collectibles like honeycombs for extra health and gingos who are seemingly helpless little beings you find and save throughout your playtime. All the levels have a fun, unique aesthetic, and it oozes with Rare's signature goofy style, cheekiness, and puntastic characters previously showcased in their Donkey Kong Country series. Not only do you learn new moves from Bottles the Mole in almost every level to keep movement and combat fresh and exciting, but you also collect Mumbo tokens to give to the eponymous shaman who will transform you into a myriad of different sentient creatures and objects to help you navigate the worlds, find secrets, play mini-games against grumpy crocodiles, or befriend anxiety-ridden seals. All of this charm is coupled with Grant Kirkhope's amazing score, featuring multiple renditions of a teddy bear's picnic, and each individual stage comes with a unique track, capturing the vibe just right, from the summer jaunt of Treasure Trove Cove to the eerie soundscapes of Mad Monster Mansion. Each track also has an underwater alternate that seamlessly transitions when you take a dip. Finally, after overcoming all the very well-paced challenges of the main game, where the difficulty slowly and expertly ramps up from level to level, you come to Grunty's Furnace Fun, a game show hosted by the witch herself with the grand prize of saving Tootie. This mini level is an awesome alteration on the idea of a video game boss rush packaged into a quiz where you can choose how you would like to proceed. Do mini games and guess the sound and locations of previous levels take your fancy? Or did you meet Grunty's sister out in the overworld and find out Grunty's disgusting secrets so you can masterfully tackle those squares? There are also valuable joker cards scattered around the board for you to skip the dreaded death squares, which will give you a random question or a mini game, but fail and it's game over. After a fake out end credit scene, there is just one more challenge to face. Grunty herself. And when I say this is a perfect culmination of a video game's seeded tutorialization, I mean it. You use almost all of your available moves in the fight against Grunty, from flying to invincibility to egg shooting, 
and all your other movement options. And it all culminates with you summoning a mega Jinjo to finally put Grunty in the ground. With Banjo-Kazooie now being available on both the NSO Plus expansion pack and Xbox backwards compatibility, I hope you check it out and find something to love in it, as I have over the last 24 years. I've been Stephen Beaumont of The Great Game Debate. My side quest is now complete. And as always, happy gaming. Hey there, Screen Beans. Have you heard about Screen Snark? Rachel, this is an ad break. They aren't screen beans until they listen to the show. Fine. Potential screen beans. You like movies and TV shows, right? I mean, who doesn't? Screen Snark is a casual conversation about the movies and television shows that are shaping us as we live our everyday lives. That's right, Matt. We have a chat with at least one incredible guest every episode, hailing from all walks. We've interviewed chefs, writers, costumers, musicians, yoga teachers, comedians, burlesque dancers, folks in the film and TV industry, and more. We'd be delighted for you to join us every other Monday on the Certain POV Podcast Network. Or wherever you get your podcasts, fresh and tasty off the presses. What? But that's, no, that's not... Can I call them Screen Beans now? Fine. Screen Beans! So tune in and we'll see you at the movies or on a couch somewhere. Because you're a whole Screen Beans now. You will be mine. Aurora! CPOV! CertainPOV.com